In today's wood story, we are creating these stunning lard planter boxes. And the best part is that they are made from inexpensive wood and a few two by fours. So go grab your tools and let's start this wood story. For this project, you will need 19 fence boards measuring one by six by six feet. And you'll also need two two by fours. I've included the full cut list here, but if you prefer to have the plans while you work, then go ahead and grab them in the description below. In order to get started with this planter box building, I highly recommend that you make all the cuts as per this cut list, but only start by cutting the ones that are indicated in yellow. And the reason for that is that you can make some small adjustments later on. If there's any mistakes, you don't want to cut all the pieces just yet because some things can be hidden if mistakes are made. Now, what I started by doing is I started by cutting 31 pieces, which are the side planks that's going to go all the way around the planter box. And these are all 23 and a half inches long. And in addition to that, that last piece, because we need 30 of them, but I cut 31 because the last piece you're going to cut exactly in half. Then I also cut a whole bunch of two inch strips. And then afterwards I cut them to length. And these are 23 and, and three fourth long. And they're two inches wide, except for the other side, which is two, which is one and a half inches wide, but they're the same length. And then our last pieces, which are the long border pieces that we're going to use for the box, they ended up being 67.5 and they are also two inches wide. I realized after filming this that I forgot to cut the short outside frame border pieces. These are indicated as C in the cut list and you're going to need four of these. So we're going to start by assembling our side pieces and that's made up with the pieces that are 23 and three quarters and they are two inches wide and one and a half inches wide. And essentially what we're going to do is we're going to put them together and then we're going to drill in from the thickest side or the widest side through here. Now there's a few different ways you can do it. You can do it this way or you can do it this way. The end result will be that you have a side here that's uh, really nice. And then this side ends up being still left raw. So it just depends on how you want your box to be facing. I am going to go with this method right here. So what I'm taking is I'm taking my freshly cut one and a half inch and I'm putting it up against my two inch piece, which means this side is going to be nicely rounded and this one is going to be completely flat. And in order to help myself, I'm just going to use a table like this and I'm going to use a clamp like this just to hold it in place. It's still going to fall if I let it go, but this is just to help support it as I put in my screws. And it would help if I open the box first. And I'm using one and a quarter inch screws and you can absolutely use nails instead, but I like to use screws. I find it easy. And if mistakes are made, it's a lot easier to take them out. So I'm going to put one up here, not too close to this top because I don't want it to be splitting, but it does have to be far enough out so that it actually goes through to the other side. Like that. And like that. And you can add one in the middle too if you like, but it's really not necessary. And you're going to have this first corner right here. And this should now, if I did it right, be the same as the other one. So we have two and two. There we go. Now we're going to make four of these. With your corners made, you're going to start by assembling the long side. And you're going to add them to a nice flat surface. And you're going to have the widest part facing the table and the shortest part sticking up. And then you're going to take your long pieces and they're going to have the cut side going out and the other cut side going out as well, because that means they're going to get hidden later on. So you're not going to see them. So all we're going to see is this nice already done edge. And then you're going to butt it right up against here like that and then we're going to grab our first plank that you have spent the time cutting 
and we're going to put it all the way over here. And we're going to line it up against nicely. And then we are going to attach our plank from this side in. There we go. By drilling through here, we're going to do at least two screws on both sides. And we're going to do the same thing on the other end. And one thing that you might notice is that these boards are cut slightly shorter than this length right here. And that's done on purpose because if you cut them all the exact same length, then you do run the risk of not properly being able to align it. And then they're going to stick out and that's going to cause the whole frame to wobble later. So that by cutting it just slightly shorter than all the other ones, as long as this board is within the two frames, you're never going to see it because it is part of the inside of the box. And I'm going to do the exact same thing to the other side. With the two corners now secured, you can go ahead and place the remaining 11 planks and secure these with screws. Once this is done, you can build the mirrored side exactly the same way. To make the end pieces for the planter box, you're going to need your pieces that are, again, those 23 and a half inches, the ones we cut 30 of. You're going to need two of those. And then you're going to need that middle piece, which is essentially this piece that's cut in half. That was that 31st piece that we talked about in the beginning. And this is just exactly half, and it's cut down the middle, and it does have an exposed edge. And that's going to go in the middle. And we're going to sandwich these together like this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take our piece that's 12 inches long, 2 inches wide. And we're going to put that here, but we're going to put that on the other side. We have to put it underneath like this. And remember, we want to have it slightly exposed because these are, again, a little bit shorter than our distance. And I'm just going to start with the first one. Now, what's really important here is that as you get it started, there, this has to be in the middle. Because what's going to end up happening is when you get it over to the planter box, it's going to essentially sit like this. That's our edge. So you want it to be in the middle. So I will start by just getting them started like this, where I can see the end like that and i'm just going to put one screw into these ones just in case i mess up then it's a lot easier for me to fix and then i'm just gonna flip it around to make it easy for myself and again put this piece underneath here but remember you want to have the nice edge facing inwards so it's going to go like this and then what's important now is that this distance, our bottom boards here, is 23 3 fourths, not 23 and a half. And once you're sure that this bottom piece has been placed exactly at 23 3 quarters, then you can go ahead and secure them with a few screws. So I am going to attach the end pieces now to the long pieces and I've just kind of laid it all ready and I've spaced it out and then we have our end board that we made before and that's going to go through like this and like that and these are going to go here like this it's easier if you just start with one side and then do the other one afterwards like that and then the whole border will be all nice when you have attached them now, I recommend putting in your screws from the back side just to avoid having too many exposed screws. But also in case if there's any kind of splitting, then you're not going to notice it in the back versus the front. So I'm going to screw mine in from that side and I'll show you. So now that we've completed the outside, we're going to start working on the inside. And you're going to need some pieces that are from two by fours. And I recommend not cutting these from the beginning. And the reason for that is if there's any um, errors that you made along the way, or if you even could just cut one or two pieces by a mill uh, wider, then this measurement could be slightly off. So what you want to do is you want to measure 
as close you're gonna, to this end as possible, like this, and you're gonna take your measurement. And mine ended up being, let's see here, 13 and three quarters. And same thing on the other side. So I'm gonna be cutting five pieces of my two by four that are 13 and three quarters. And I'm gonna be placing one here, one at the end, one in the middle, and then space them out as well. So with our two by fours cut to size, this is where you're gonna to need to make a decision for yourself. If you want to make a garden box that is fully covered with dirt, you can go ahead and put these all the way down in the bottom and then we'll still lay the structures across. However, this would be a lot of dirt to fill and most people don't need this amount of dirt if these planter boxes are just for decorative purposes. So you could choose to put this around halfway or even further up, depending on your project. So I'm gonna show you an example. I did another box over here. These ones are going to be living on my porch and I am only planting some very small flowers. I might even just do flower pots. So I took a measurement for a pot, which was six inches. So I made this distance right here a total of seven inches. So right now with my cross beams all laid in, I have a lot less dirt that I need to fill as opposed to if I, in this box here, placed these all the way down at the bottom and then did my cross beams. This would be a lot of volume to fill with dirt. So just something to keep in mind. I'm gonna show you um, where I'm positioning them in order to get that smaller amount of dirt. But again, like I said, this is a flexible design. You can really customize it to what you want and your need. So as you can see here, I am attaching the two by fours to the inside of the box and I'm using two and a half inch screws. And the top edge of this two by four is placed seven inches down from the top. So I just added the planks in on the inside and you will have noticed that I only did the two two by fours at the very end. And the reason for that is it's a lot easier to add the rest of them once I have these boards on because they're gonna act as my leveler and I'll be able to make sure that this is actually level between the two sides before I flip it over and, uh, and put the rest of them in. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna just do a quick uh, level check and then I'm going to secure these boards to the two by fours that we already put underneath. And then I'll flip it over and then I'll add the remaining three two by fours underneath um, in the right positions. And you might also notice that there is a little bit of a gap here in my boards. And that's on purpose because with any plants, they're gonna need drainage. So you never want it to be so tight that water can't escape. Now, if I just added dirt after the fact here, some of the dirt might actually fall out. So it's also a great idea to either add some newspaper to the bottom before adding the dirt, or you can use a plant liner. But either way, don't make this too tight. If you are concerned about drainage, you can also use uh, just a regular drill and drill some holes throughout. That will also give you lots of drainage. But again, it all depends on what you're planning on using these planter boxes for uh, and uh, how much you're going to be watering them. So with the box flipped over, I attached the remaining three two by fours. I also decided to cut an additional three two by fours, also measuring uh, 13 three fourths. And then I attached these to the very bottom because I wanted the box to have a bit more bottom support. And this is because I attached my shelf so close to the top. So if you're placing your shelf at the bottom, then this added support really isn't necessary. So now that the inside is done, the outside is done, the only thing left to do is cut the final pieces for the border. And these ones you can add in a couple of ways. I am going to add them like this 
and then I'm going to have a piece that's going to fit between the two borders like this. However, if you want to do miter corners, you absolutely can. But just keep in mind that when you do do mitered corners in an outside environment, your uh, seams are very likely to split very quickly or they're at least going to bulge and show a little bit more. Now this one is going to be painted so I'm not really going to see the, the mitered corner anyway. That's why I'm not choosing to do it and because of them uh, being out in an area where they're going to get a lot of rain and be in the elements. I do personally prefer a mitered corner. I think it looks really nice but just be aware of that when you make your decision. And then as well, because this is the top, I recommend that you do a layer of glue, outdoor glue only, again, if they're gonna be in an outdoor environment. And then you can also use nails just to pin it in place. Uh, if you do use screws, you can fill them with wood filler. Hello, Hero. Uh, just a few options for you. And while I cut the final pieces for the planter box, I wanna say thank you so much for following along my wood story. I am just a few weeks away from my one year YouTube anniversary and this video marks my 25th long form video with 24 of them being step by step projects such as this one. So if you would like some inspiration then please go ahead and check out any of these other videos. And if you'd like to be alerted of new videos then please consider subscribing and hit that notification bell. My finishing touches for the planter box was filling the nail holes with some wood putty and then I decided to bring out my Wagner paint sprayer. This sprayer does not need an air compressor. I've only used it twice before this and there is for sure a bit of a learning curve. I do find that the first layer goes on very splotchy. This may be because I did not strain the paint as the manufacturer recommends. But I do find that as long as you apply two to three very thin coats, then this splotchiness is invisible in the end. So I wasn't overly worried. And just like that, this project was done and the planter boxes were ready for my porch. Well, almost. I actually still have two more planter boxes to make. But for the sake of getting this video completed, I didn't want you to have to wait for me. The plans can be found down in the description, so go grab those. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Winnie, and I'll see you soon in the next wood story.